Well, welcome back and welcome to Chapter 2. That's right, we're going into Information Security Management. And what we're going to do uh, this particular lesson is go back and look at our CNSS model, talk a little bit about traditional components associated uh, with planning, things like a vision statement, and a mission statement, and a value statement, what those mean to organizations. And then the different types of plans that you can have within an organization and how security uh, ties within that. So that's kind of the uh, outline of what we're going to do uh, during uh, this particular module, during this chapter. Let's go ahead and look at the agenda real quick and uh, from there let's dig into the CNSS model a little bit. So alright, there's the uh, layout that we have. Um, should be no surprises good chapter lots of good stuff that is applicable to the uh, business office but let's get back to um, CNSS first so first thing to do is remember the model confidentiality can I protect um, who sees the information integrity can I protect um, so that someone can't change the information availability can I protect so that others can get to the information and it, when I'm looking at that do I look at it while the information is being stored or processed or transmitted and then you've got that kind of uh, arch in the middle or arrow in the middle that addresses policy education and the technology as your three tools those three quivers or those three not quivers but arrows in your quiver uh, that you can use to solve problems in the security space. And what we've now added to this slide as you look across the bottom <clears throat> are a number of different uh, types of attacks. So what I'm going to do is uh, talk through each of these so that you get some idea of uh, what, that, what each of the attacks mean and then we'll go into how you would defend uh, against each of these uh, types of attacks. So, first one's a virus, that's where we've written the program, stored that program, uh, or, or somehow introduced that program onto the computer, and then that uh, virus can do all sorts of very nasty stuff. Um, it can attack the confidentiality, integrity, or availability uh, of particular uh, uh, resources. Uh, and uh, virus writing was pretty rampant in the 90s and early 2000. It's still out there. There are lots of kits for doing it, but it's, 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 it's scaling back a little bit. And uh, other forms of attacks are becoming uh, more important. So spam. <clears throat> spam is, um, oh, one last thing before I leave viruses. Just keep in mind, there are lots of kits out there uh, for writing viruses. You don't have to start from scratch. You can come in uh, these days and say these are the characteristics I want in my virus and voila a program will produce that virus for you. So uh, it, it, it's, it's not the point, part where you have to have a heavy technical knowledge to write a virus. Uh, you just have to uh, have access to the right software. Now the defenses against that of course are antivirus programs and they're fairly sophisticated uh, too but we'll talk about those a little bit more. Uh, spam is where you where you know uh, you have uh, email coming in and that email is unsolicited, unwanted, uh, typically selling things that you have no interest in and um, why folks are doing this is because of the profits associated for every hundred email that you don't click, there's someone else in the world who will click it, who will send them money, uh, who will uh, support or, or, or send personally identifiable information across that allow bad guys and bad gal, uh, girls to break into their computers. Uh, so spam is just that collection of email that is uh, coming in that you have to deal with. Denial of service attack is one of these where you're uh, coming in and you're constantly consuming a, a resource, uh, be it processing, stored, or stored your transmission, typically transition, transmission, but doesn't have to be. And uh, as a result of that, you're taking that particular site or computer um, or processor uh, so that it can't do its intended task. So 
Uh, it's not a, an attack against confidentiality or integrity. It's an attack against availability. <clears throat> Changing bank accounts. This is uh, you've probably probably heard of this before. Uh, it's been in movies a couple of times. We'll just shave a little bit of uh, money off of a particular account, and we'll roll all of that money together uh, into one account. And if you do it hundreds of millions or billions of times a day you'll end up making some real money. It was a real attack. It, it actually did work, uh, but it did work about 40 years ago. It does not work today. Uh, the uh, folks who are designing uh, computer programs that run in banks uh, hire teams to make sure that that type of coding is not there. Okay, inside attack. You might wonder what that is. Uh, inside attack versus an outside attack. Typically, in your mind, you probably have some picture of uh, uh, some kid sitting in some remote part of Washington or who knows where, trying to break into a computer system. It was uh, the, the premise for a movie. Uh, actually, most attacks come from uh, an employee, someone who has access to data, and those are called uh, inside attacks. <clears throat> All right. We talked earlier about spam email coming in, trying to sell you all of this stuff. Phishing is really kind of the same thing, but in phishing attacks, what you have is, uh, in a normal phishing attack, spam is just all that email coming in. Spam is coming, or phishing is coming in and trying to get some of your uh, personally identifiable information out of you uh, by making the message look. <coughs> as if it's legitimate. <coughs> and excuse me for that cough there. And then spear phishing, a variant of that, is where they know something about you. And so they can tailor that message so that it's spear phishing. It's focused on your needs. It may look a lot more like it came from you or target you based on some information that you had uh, previously posted. So we've covered the first, what is that, six attacks of 18 that we're going to talk about. We've talked about viruses, spam, denial of service attacks, um, uh, changing uh, bank accounts where you're skimming off pennies, inside attacks versus outside attacks, phishing, and spear phishing. And in the next video, we're going to move to that middle column and talk about each of those types of attacks. And as I'm talking about them, Hopefully what you've got in the back of your mind is, is, you know, is this an attack against confidentiality, integrity, availability? Does it affect storage, processing, or transmission? And how could I use policy, education, or technology to address that type of an attack? All right? And so I'm going to go ahead and end this video now, and we will pick right back up in the next video with that middle column of different types of attacks.